Now we will see the auxin hormone transport with the help of an animation. We will see exactly how auxin hormone gets transported. Auxin hormone transport acts in two different ways. One is the polar transport of auxin from the apical meristematic tissue to the bottom. So from the top of the plant to the bottom. And there is another way uh, that is the lateral movement of auxin from the top cells to the neighboring cells in, cells in the side by. Okay. So let's see the components of the auxin transport. As the auxin can be transported in two different manners. One is the polar movement of auxin from the top of the plant cell to the bottom of the cell. That means from the shoot towards the root. And the second type is the lateral movement of auxin. That is from the top of the cells to the neighboring lateral side of the cells. The auxin transport includes two different forms of auxin. One is IAH form. Another one is the IAA minus form. This forms form due to the presence of the different pH in the environment where this auxin is present. Apart from that, the important constituent of the auxin transports are the transporters, namely this ox1 or lax transporters. These are known as auxin influx carriers and take auxin inside of the cytoplasm. And there are auxin efflux carriers named PIN, PIN form protein, PIN1 family proteins. There is another uh, auxin influx carrier except for PIN that is PGP, okay, P glycoprotein. P glycoproteins are located in the lateral side while PIN is located to the uh, like vertical positions. Now IAAH form can easily readily diffuse inside the plant cytoplasm, okay, without involvement of any of the auxin influx carriers. And then this IAAH can take its journey quite easily because the cytoplasmic pH is pH 7 and at this pH the IAAH is dissociated into two different forms IAA and H+. Now this IAA takes the journey through the pin or auxin efflux carrier into the intercellular space and then this IAA can take the journey again because this intercellular space has the intercellular pH of pH 5. And as the pH is acidic, then this IAA minus is associated with the H plus here and they form IAAH again. And then IAAH can easily take entry into the next cell below the early cell via the normal diffusion route. This is the movement of IAAH form of the auxin from the top cell to the bottom cell. And this movement, if you can see, this is particularly a polar movement from the top to the bottom, cells on the up from the cells to the bottom. Okay. And now if you look at IAA, it travels via the auxin transporter that is auxin influx carrier OX1 inside the cytoplasm. Then this IAA is present in the cytoplasm and it can take its journey via PIN1 which is auxin influx carrier into the intercellular space. IAA can also take another route of the lateral movement via the P glycoproteins into the neighboring cells. Now the IAA from the intercellular space can move via the OX1 to the neighbor to the cells in the bottom. Now let now we are going to see the route of auxin transport based on the presence or absence of sunlight. When there is no sunlight, there is no sunlight, no photons. At this particular moment. The plant cells stop expressing the P glycoproteins. So the P glycoprotein expression is kind of inhibited. And as a result, they start to initiate more and more PIN1 type of proteins, which are auxin efflux carriers. So they make more and more PIN1 proteins. So the indolacetic acid or auxin start to take its journey via the OX1 influx carriers into the cytoplasm. And from cytoplasm, this IA takes the journey via PIN1 into the intercellular space. And then this IA takes the journey again via OX1 to the next, next cell to the bottom. And this way, the journey continues. And this movement is a polar movement when there is no sunlight. The auxin flows from the top of the cell to the bottom of the plant cell. 
so from the apical meristematic tissue towards the root this is a polar movement but let's see the situation when there is presence of sunlight if there is sunlight presence then what will happen is that that auxin moves away from sunlight and auxin try to move away from sunlight and at this particular condition the more and more p glycoproteins are expressed in the uh, surface of the cell uh, so they take they gets inside of the cell via the auxin port uh, influx carriers or ox1 but instead of taking the journey via pin1 proteins this time the auxin try to move away from sunlight and as a result of which it takes the journey via pgp protein which is present in the opposite of the direction of the sunlight and ia start moving into the other and take the path of pgp export path and then move to the neighboring cell and this movement is a non polar movement and as a result of more and more auxin hormone accumulation into the uh, neighboring cell it increases the cell division in that area and as a result we see movement and growth of the cell in the opposite of the sunlight of the plant cell and as a result of which the plant tend to bend towards the sunlight and this is how the auxin give rise to what is known as a phototropism or phototropic effect to the plant cell